Hello everyone, this is Mike History 2 and today I will be talking about the life of Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. So as you guys probably already know, he died today, actually only just a couple of hours ago. Um, and obviously it's a pretty big deal because he was almost 100 when he died and also, you know, he's the wife of Queen Elizabeth, who's the Queen of the UK, but also of Canada where I live. So I decided to do a biography on him. So Prince Philip of Greece and Denmark was born in Mon Repos on the Greek island of Corfu on June 10th, 1921, the only son and fifth and final child of Prince Andrew of Greece and Denmark and Princess Alice of Bannenberg. A member of the House of Bluxburg, the ruling house of Denmark, he was a prince of both Greece and Denmark by virtue of his patrilineal descent from George I of Greece and Christian IX of Denmark. And he was from birth in the line of succession to both thrones. Philip's four elder sisters were Margarita, Theodora, Cecily, and Sophie. He was baptized in the Greek Orthodox Rite at St. George's Church in the Old Fortress in Corfu. Now, shortly after Philip's birth, his maternal grandfather, Prince Louis of Battenberg, then known as Louis Mountbatten, Marquess of Milford Haven, died in London. Louis was a naturalized British subject who, after a career in the Royal Navy, had renounced his German titles and adopted the surname Mountbatten, an anglicized version of Battenberg during, the, during World War I, owing to anti-German sentiment in the United Kingdom. After visiting London for his grandfather's memorial service, Philip and his mother returned to Greece, where Prince Andrew had remained to command a Greek army division embroiled in the Greco-Turkish War. The war went badly for Greece, and the Turks took a lot of land. Philip's uncle and high commander of the Greek expeditionary force, King Constantine I of Greece, was blamed for the defeat, and was forced to abdicate on September 27, 1922. The new military government arrested Prince Andrew along with others. The commanding officer of the army, General Georgios Hadzianestis, and five senior politicians were arrested, tried, and executed in the trial of the sixth. Prince Andrew's life was also believed to be in danger, and Princess Alice was under surveillance. Finally, in December, a revolutionary court banished Prince Andrew from Greece for life. The British naval vessel HMS Calypso evacuated Prince Andrew's family with Philip carried to safety in a cot made from a fruit box. Philip's family went to France where they settled in the Paris suburb of Saint Cloud in a house lent to them by his wealthy aunt Prince Marie Bonaparte. Because Philip left Greece as a baby, he did not speak Greek and say he thought of himself more as Danish and his family spoke English, French, and German. Now, Philip was educated at the Elms, an American school in Paris run by Donald McJanet, who described Philip as a know-it-all smarty person, but always remarkably polite, kind of like me. In 1928, he was sent to the United Kingdom to attend Cheam School, or I don't really know how to pronounce that, living with his maternal grandmother, Victoria Mountbatten, Dowager Marchioness of Milford Haven at Kensington Palace, and his uncle, George Mountbatten, second Marquess of Milford Haven, at Linden Manor in Bray, Berkshire. In the next three years, his four sisters married German princes and moved to Germany. And his mother was diagnosed with schizophrenia and placed in an asylum, and his father took a residence in Monte Carlo in Monaco. Philip had little contact with his mother for the rest of his childhood. In 1933, he was sent to Schloss Salem in Germany, where he had the advantage of saving school fees because it was owned by the family of his brother-in-law, Berthold Margrave of Baden. However, this was also the year that the Nazis took over in Germany, and by the way, you can watch my biographies on Adolf Hitler. And Salem's Jewish founder, Kurt Hahn, led persecution and founded Gordonston School in Scotland, to which Philip moved after two terms at Salem. In 1937, his sister Cecily, her husband Georg Donatus, hereditary Grand Duke of Hesse, her two young sons, Ludwig and Alexander, her newborn infant, and her mother-in-law, Princess Eleanor of Solms, and Solms Lick were killed in an air crash at Ostend, and Philip, then 16 years old, attended the funeral in Darmstadt. The following year, his uncle and guardian, Lord Milford Haven, died of bone marrow cancer. So after leaving Gordonston in early 1939, Philip completed a term as a cadet at the Royal Navy College Dartmouth, then repatriated to Greece, living with his mother in Athens for a month in mid-1939. At the behest of the Greek king, George II, who was also his first cousin, he returned to the night to the United Kingdom in September to resume training for the Royal Navy. He graduated from Dartmouth the next year as the best cadet in his course. During World War II, he continued to serve 
from the British forces, while two of his brothers-in-law, Prince Christoph of Hesse and Berthold Margrave of Baden, fought on the opposing German side. Philip was appointed as a midshipman in January 1940. He spent four months on the battleship HMS Ramillies, protecting convoys of his Australian expeditionary force in the Indian Ocean, followed by shorter postings on HMS Kent, on HMS Shropshire, and in Ceylon. After the invasion of Greece by Italy in October 1940, he was transferred from the Indian Ocean to the battleship HMS Valiant in the Mediterranean fleet. On February 1st, 1941, Philip was commissioned as a sub-lieutenant after a series of courses at Portsmouth, in which he gained the top grade in four out of five sections of the qualifying examination. Among other engagements, he was involved in the Battle of Crete and was mentioned in dispatches for his services during the Battle of Cape Matapan, in which he enrolled the battleship's searchlights. He was also awarded the Greek War Cross. In June 1942, he was appointed to the V and W class destroyer and flotilla leader HMS Wallace, which was involved in convoy escort tasks on the east coast of Britain, as well as the Allied invasion of Sicily. Promotion to lieutenant followed on July 16, 1942. In October of the same year, he became first lieutenant of HMS Wallace, and at 21 years old, one of the youngest first lieutenants in the Royal Navy. During the invasion of Sicily in July 1943, as second in command of Wallace, he saved a ship from a night bomber attack. He devised a plan to launch a raft with the smoke floats that successfully distracted the bombers, allowing the ship to slip away unnoticed. In 1944, he moved on to the new destroyer, HMS Wealth, where he saw service with the British Pacific Fleet in the 27th Destroyer Flotilla. He was present in Tokyo Bay when the instrument of Japanese surrender was signed. Philip returned to the United Kingdom on the Wealth in January 1946 and was posted as an instructor at HMS Royal Arthur, the Petty Officers School in Corsum, Wiltshire. Now, in 1939, King George VI and Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, toured the Royal Naval College at Dartmouth. During the visit, the Queen and Louis Mountbatten asked his nephew to escort the King's two daughters, Elizabeth, who would later become Elizabeth II, and Princess Margaret, Countess of Snowdon, who were Philip's third cousins through Queen Victoria and second cousins once removed through King Christian IX of Denmark. Elizabeth fell in love with Philip and they began to exchange letters when she was 13. Eventually, in the summer of 1946, Philip asked the King for his daughter's hand in marriage, and the king granted his request, provided that any formal engagement be delayed until Elizabeth's 21st birthday the following April. In March 1947, Philip had abandoned his Greek and Danish royal titles, had adopted the surname Mountbatten from his mother's family, and had become a naturalized British subject. The engagement was announced to the public on July 10, 1947. Though Philip appeared always to have regarded himself as an Anglican, and he had attended Anglican services with his classmates and friends in England, and throughout his Royal Navy days, he had been baptized in the Greek Orthodox Church. Archbishop of Canterbury, Geoffrey Fisher, wanted to regularize Philip's position by officially receiving him into the Church of England, which he did on October 1947. The day before the wedding, King George VI bestowed the style of Royal Highness on Philip, and on the morning of the wedding, November 20th, 1947, he was made the Duke of Edinburgh, the Earl of Marionette, and Baron Greenwich of Greenwich and in the County of London. Therefore, being already a Knight of the Garter between November 19th and 20th, 1947, he bore the unusual style, His Royal Highness Sir Philip Mountbatten, and is so described in the letters patent of November 20th, 1947. So Philip and Elizabeth were married in a ceremony at Westminster Abbey, recorded and broadcast by BBC Radio to 200 million people around the world. Now in post-war Britain, it was not acceptable for any of Philip's German relatives to be invited to the wedding, um, including Philip's three surviving sisters, all of whom had married German princes. After their marriage, the Duke and Duchess of Edinburgh took up residence at Clarence House. The first two children were born before Elizabeth succeeded her father as monarch in 1952, Prince Charles, no, Charles the Prince of Wales in 1948, and Anne Princess Royal in 1950, and their marriage was to become the longest of any British monarch. So, Philip was introduced to the House of Lords in on July 21st, 1948, immediately before his uncle Louis Mountbatten, who had already been made Earl Mountbatten of Burma. 
Philip, like his sons Charles and Andrew and other royals, ceased to become members of the House of Lords following the House of Lords Act 1999. In fact, he never spoken in the House. Now, after his honeymoon at the Mount Baden family home, Broadlands, Philip returned to the Navy at first in a desk job at Admiralty, and later on a staff course at the Naval Staff College in Greenwich. From 1949, he was stationed in Malta after being posted as the first lieutenant of the destroyer HMS Checkers, the lead ship of the first destroyer flotilla in the Mediterranean fleet. On July 16, 1950, he was promoted to lieutenant commander and given command of the frigate HMS Magpie. On June 30, 1952, he was promoted to commander, although his active naval career had ended in July 1951. When the king, with the king in ill health, Princess Elizabeth and the Duke of Edinburgh were both appointed to the Privy Council on November 4, 1951, after a coast-to-coast -to -coast tour of Canada. At the end of January 1952, Philip and his wife set out on a tour of the Commonwealth. And on February 6, 1952, they were in Kenya when Elizabeth's father died and she became queen. It was Philip who broke the news to Elizabeth at Sagana Lodge and the royal party immediately returned to the United Kingdom. All right, so part two is coming out next where I'll talk about what he, you know, actually did as husband to the queen. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and share.